Welcome to this presentation on descriptive statistics using SQL. Some people might wonder why would I use an SQL program to calculate statistics when I could use SPSS or SAS or Python or R or maybe even Excel. Well there are some good reasons to do it in SQL and it will really sharpen your SQL skills to build these. One of the reasons is executing SQL inside of the database is much faster, which becomes a large issue when you're talking about dealing with huge data sets. In fact, that's the second portion, is you can execute these routines to calculate statistics against tens of thousands, millions, and hundreds of millions of rows. Databases can handle huge quantities of data, whereas stat packages cannot. So let's get started. Descriptive statistics is a univariate analysis, and that is the examination of one variable at a time. Now we can analyze several variables, all of them one at a time, and get descriptive statistics. The major purpose is to describe the variable and patterns in the data. There are three major characteristics of a single variable that we are going to consider. That is the distribution of the data, the central tendency of the data, and the dispersion. For the distribution, we look at a summary of the frequency of individual values or ranges of values for a variable. Sometimes we make arbitrary cutoffs or groups and then we show the data within those groups. So we have a frequency distribution that's often used. Distributions may also be displayed using percentages as opposed to the raw values. The central tendency of a data set is an estimate of the center of the distribution of values. There are three major types of estimates for central tendency that we will cover using SQL. The first is mean, and that's a simple average, which is a sum of all the values divided by the number of values. The second one is the median, which is the exact middle of the set of values. So you count to the number of values that hit the middle and return that one. Third is mode, and mode is the most frequently occurring value in the set of scores. Dispersion is the measurement of the spread of the data values around the central tendency. And we include two measures of that. The first is the range, which is simply the highest value minus the lowest value. And the second is the standard deviation. And the standard deviation shows the relation that a set of score has to the mean of the sample. To generate our descriptive statistics, we downloaded a data set from UC Irvine, their machine learning center, that's listed right here. We have a table then called online retail, and these are all of the attributes that we're going to use. We obviously make a lot of use of the unit price and the quantity, um, and then we generate an attribute called total line. So here is the data in SQL Server as we've imported it. Notice we have retail ID, inv invoice number, stock code, description, quantity, invoice date, unit price, total line then is unit price times quantity, the customer ID, and the country. One thing we might do to get a feel for the data is to look at the distribution. And here we look at the earliest invoice date and the latest invoice date in this data set. So we see that the earliest date is December 2010 and the latest date is December 2011. So that gets us an idea of the range of dates that we have in our data set. Another thing we want to do with distribution is to look at quantity and unit price Quantity times unit price then is the total line item. And what if we could look at 
quantity times unit price for each month. So here's a query that'll do that. It's really pretty simple. Quantity times unit price. The rest of the part of the query here is to format it so that we'll have dollars. And this part of the query gives us our date range. And so if I did this for every one of the 12 months, I would union those so that I would have one little stanza for each month. If you do it like that, your answer comes out with monthly total and you have a one, two, three, and so on, so you don't have an opportunity to label the name of that month. Here is another way to do that same query. Notice we have a select and the first column is actually a subquery. And that's going to give us the quantity times price and the total amount of that with this sum for the period of December 2010. And here's the next one which is January and that's going to give me January sum sales. I did it this way because I want to have my answers appear horizontally and have them have a title. So here is the query in SQL Server and it admittedly looks a bit ugly at first glance. Notice we have this outer select and then each column is its own subquery. It looks ugly but it was just really a lot of copy paste and then I changed the dates every time. So here is December 2010 here is January 2011 and I have one of the subqueries to represent every column. If I execute this and pull this up you can see I have a horizontal total with headings here or column names that represent the total dollar amount for each month through this time period. The most common measure of central tendency is the mean. It is simply an average. I have done two different versions of an SQL statement to return the mean. This first one is the actual formula. So I take quantity times price, that gives me the total line for each transaction, and then we do a sum divided by the number of transactions. The second one is just using the average function that's built in to SQL. And here is the calculation for that average. Another measure of central tendency is the median. There is not a median function that's built into SQL Server. So we used a windowing function to help us with that. That function is the percentile discrete. There's a sister function, percentile continuous, that would interpolate a value between the two centermost data points if there were an even number of data points. This one returns an actual data point and we put 0.5 because that's at the 50th percentile. Of course what we want to order by is quantity times unit price because that gives that total line amount. Here is the calculation, the results of our median calculation in SQL Server. The third measure of central tendency is known as a mode. There is not a mode function pre-built into SQL Server, but this was a lot of fun to build with database components. A first thing to note is we're going to do a count, and that's going to be what we order by. Of course, the grouping is each line total, and that is our unit price times quantity. In the top select, we have unit price times quantity, and we choose our top one. So it is sorted and the one at the very top is returned. So when we do the order by count star, that is returning a, the number of occurrences for each combination of unit times price. The one that occurs the very most time then is returned and that is known as a mode. 
Our first measure of dispersion will be the range. Remember that dispersion is a measure of how spread out the data is. So if our data is very clustered around a central point, the range is smaller. And if the data is all spread out and scattered, then it's very wide. Here's a query to do that with the same data that we've been using. We use our line total here in the max, and then in the min we do the same thing. So we take quantity times price, and we take the largest combination minus the smallest combination of quantity times price. So he, down here you can see the range right here. I did a WHERE clause here of quantity times price greater than zero because as I was looking through the data it wasn't totally clean and there were a lot of negative values that reflected the notion that some transactions were canceled out. So a range gives you a feel or the highest and lowest values and how spread out the data is. The third measure of dispersion is standard deviation. And we're kind of lucky here because there is a built-in standard deviation function, which we have right here in the select clause. So we have our quantity times unit price and we put that inside of our function. And again, I've used the WHERE clause to have positive values. Our standard deviation then is 270. So what is the actual meaning behind standard deviation? Here is a commonly used graphic in explaining that. Assume for just a moment that this point right here is the mean value, the sum divided by the count. 68% of all the data is going to fall within one standard deviation plus or minus of the mean. So when we said our standard deviation is 270, then to the mean plus or minus 270 will give us 68% of our values. Let's look at what our calculations look like in SQL Server. Let's calculate the standard deviation and the mean and look at both of those. The mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 270, which is fascinating because 270 means it's very widely dispersed. It would give us pause to wonder if we did something wrong. So it might be useful if we go and look at those calculations, maybe order them, and see if we can explain why the huge standard deviation compared to the mean. Let's make an entire list from smallest to largest of all the quantity times prices. Notice the smallest ones are just absolutely tiny. That's 0 .001. Whereas the largest values end at 168,469. So the reason that we have just an absolutely huge standard deviation relative to the mean is because our data is very widely dispersed. It is nice sometimes to return common measures of the data even if they aren't part of classic descriptive statistics. Here you see we do a count, min, max, average, and sum to get an idea of what's going on with our data. Again, I eliminated any negatives just to get a look at it. And here's our number, smallest, largest, average, and total. It's always good to do those measures so that you can get a feel for what's going on with your data set. In conclusion, it is important to gather some basic information about every data set. Calculating basic measures is useful to, in understanding the data. And examining the distribution central tendency and dispersion is very useful to get a feel for the data. Mm -hmm.